Hello, good evening, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets uh, on the Sunday the 13th of March, for Monday's trading the 14th of March 2016. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs, especially since spread betting and CFD brokerage, and certainly earn up to £2,500 uh, in terms of potential uh, cash bonus offer for new accounts. Alternatively, you can visit the uh, educational site, which is www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, where do I start? In terms of uh, Asian markets uh, uh, opening overnight and uh, the potential news out over the weekend, we've had uh, economic data out of China certainly came in weaker, weaker than expected. Okay, so that certainly is one negative uh, risk event uh, certainly to take into consideration. So you're certainly seeing or expecting risk aversion to start off in terms of the data out of China over the weekend. Uh, certainly uh, with regards to its imports, uh, I know what's not the import, should I say? Um, with regards to um, its, if I got the data here, bear with me. We, we had retail sales out of China, certainly weak, uh, and industrial production weak as well. Uh, also with Mr. Zhu, no big stimulus needed, uh, certainly negative comments there. Okay, so that certainly is two uh, risk off uh, events, okay, or risk off news flow for the S&P 500 okay right uh, let's start okay so from my perspective the S&P 500 first of all let's start off with the uh, Russell as always so let's start off with Russell 2000 given the fact that we've had weaker Chinese data anti QE talk from China as well and therefore looking to potentially move lower so let's look at the Russell Russell itself Okay, 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 okay. Here we go. Okay, so Russell 2000. Let's start off with the weekly chart. Weekly chart is in previous support equals resistance. So, given the fact that we've got weaker Chinese data uh, over the weekend, that will be a negative risk event. We've got anti QE talk from Mr. Zhu. Again, that's a risk off event. And given the fact that commodities are into resistance, if I bring up a chart of oil and uh, clearly show you that the equity, the commodities market certainly is under resistance. You've got copper. On a daily chart basis, you can clearly see you've got a bear flag in formation. You've got bearish consolidation there. Uh, gold itself certainly uh, indicating risk off. The four hour chart clearly a double top, and therefore that will put further cost, obviously weakness in, in terms of commodities. Daily chart of oil is holding previous support equal resistance, and therefore looking at a risk off event. Given the fact that the Iranians have stated that they want to reach four million dollars, four million um, barrels per day in terms of production, and they're currently just about languishing at two million. And therefore, they are not going to join the uh, production uh, production uh, freeze at present. Therefore, that's net net negative, given the excess oil supply onto the market. Okay, so hence the reason why you are looking at uh, additional weakness on the U.S. market. So weekly chart of the Russell certainly confirms that previous support equals resistance. You certainly expecting weakness here. The uh, gap fill resistance. We're back into that zone. Okay, therefore Russell, you are expecting weakness. 60-minute chart. You're into that Fib 75% Fib 75% retracement with an unfilled gap left behind. So therefore that gap itself will act as a potential magnet, okay? You do have an unfilled gap above, but given the weaker data from China over the weekend, you are looking at weakness. Adding the fact that the Euro USD is currently trading at 1.16, and that itself is a risk barometer, and given the fact that a stronger Euro equals bearish for equities, given the, uh, the anti-QE trade, okay? So looking at weakness there. Now also, uh, I have discussed in my European market video, you are looking at the Remimbi. And the renminbi is uh, into resistance and therefore you are looking at a, a bearish uh, sentiment as well with regards to remember the weaker renminbi it certainly uh, uh, indicates um, obviously uh, uh, given the fact that global trade is a zero-sum game a weaker renminbi takes away trade from the us and europe and therefore it's uh, it's considered a, a risk off event okay so you can clearly see the russell has an unfilled gap left behind you've put a potential doji there on terminate chart and therefore you are looking at our expecting weakness okay on the russell itself okay now, cross-referencing that with the S&P 500, the daily chart of the S&P 500 is into its 200 MA. Therefore, you're looking at a risk-off event. The weekly chart of the S&P 500 is into that uh, previous support equal resistance. Again, is into that Fib 61 to 75% is into that resistance zone. So very, very important. You have horizontal resistance here at 2021. So looking at weakness, and then you have resistance above at 2044 with the unfilled gap. Can we reach that unfilled gap above? No, we can't from my perspective. Given the fact that, like I said, you had weaker Chinese data, and you have you have you now have this concern from the ECB with regards to a higher euro. Now that really is a conundrum. Okay, uh, how are we going to tackle that? 
is that bullish or bearish for US markets? That's going to be very interesting, okay? Also, given the fact for US markets, you have the situation with regards to the yen. And the yen on the 60 minute, you can see you're into a double bottom. On the daily chart, you're into gap fill uh, support. So we have a conundrum again. A stronger yen from here will be negative for US markets and send the markets lower. So everything from an intermarket analysis perspective certainly seems to be set up to move lower. That's my understanding, okay? Again, the market's always right. So if this analysis is wrong overnight, with US markets rallying, then that's a different equation altogether. Now, bringing up the VIX whilst we're on this topic, looking at the VIX itself. Okay, let's just bring up the daily chart of the VIX. Okay, so daily chart of the VIX is into gap fill support. Okay, and you are looking for a potential bounce from the daily chart alone. Okay, so keep an eye on the VIX itself. Like I said, it's into that gap fill support zone. Okay, as you can see here, and therefore looking for a bounce. You do have an unfilled gap on the VIX above. So that gap needs to be targeted from my perspective. Let's just clean up my charts here. A lot of mess has been made here. So again, that unfilled gap above is going to act as a magnet for the global markets. And you are looking for a potential thrust higher. That's my understanding, okay? Especially with the weaker Chinese data out over the weekend. Even though we have broken out of there, you are looking at a potential reversal and a quite a powerful one at that. And you are looking at gap fill above, okay? So watch out for that, uh, for that zone from my perspective, okay? Right. Okay, uh, now in terms of the uh, Dow, let's just bring up the Dow itself, bring up the Dow on a weekly chart, and you can see that we are now coming into that resistance zone, okay? Uh, daily chart of the uh, or the Dow itself, you are into previous support equals resistance and into that 200 MA as well. So this zone in and of itself is certainly into a weakness from my perspective and looking for a move potentially lower. Dow transportation average, okay, that hasn't copied or hasn't led the uh, the Dow it transports higher. You are into that previous support equal resistance zone. Uh, can we really move higher from here? Good question, okay, good question. We shall see exactly how the US markets respond, okay. So given the fact that we've got no economic data out from the US, that's going to be uh, interesting because the markets will fall back rely solely on, on fundamentals. Now, you do have a gap fill uh, resistance zone here on the uh, Dow transportation. So again, that's going to be risk aversion. Okay, so you can clearly see here we've got this gap which we've closed and that itself is going to uh, signify risk off more. Okay, uh, on the, uh, the actual... Uh, Dow transportation average. Okay, so that's a zone that we're going to look at. Right, okay, so that's Dow Transports organized. Okay, let's uh, move on to the Wilshire. The Wilshire is a, a leading index and that will certainly give us a better clue. Now, we have broken out this diagonal trend line, which is quite impressive. So, and we've broken out a previous support equal resistance. The next real zone is going to be this zone here at 200 MA. So, that certainly is worth watching. You did, you, did, you did have this uh, previous support equal resistance. Now, any thrust higher will be met with resistance, okay? So that certainly needs to be taken into consideration. We've taken out that resistance zone, which is impressive, okay? But we are into this next zone here. So the Wilshire certainly has a lot of work to be done. Now, whether or not we consolidate and push back and then move higher, that certainly is a, is a different question altogether. But the, uh, the Wilshire 5000, very, very impressive. So certainly needs to give uh, props to the Wilshire. It certainly is displaying bullish characteristics. But has it gone up too quick, uh, too far, too soon? Okay, so again, that certainly needs to be watched carefully. Okay, now let's bring up the uh, the actual Nasdaq itself. Prior to that, let's look at the biotech. Let's see exactly where they're positioned. The biotech at the moment certainly is languishing. Certainly is indicating weakness. No real strength here, given the fact that uh, you are into that zone where previous support equals resistance. So you're looking at resistance here for the interim. Whether or not we can build here before we push higher, that certainly is a different question altogether. So the biotechs for Nasdaq certainly weak. Now, let's bring up the semiconductors. Semiconductors certainly impressive, quite an impressive thrust tire here. Can we sustain this thrust? That's the question. Now, we do have an unfilled gap above. So given the fact that we have closed the one gap, that certainly is uh, certainly worth noting, okay? We do have an unfilled gap above. So again, that certainly needs to be watched carefully as well, whether or not we can sustain this move. Now, let's look at the actual Nasdaq itself now. Let's see exactly where the Nasdaq is positioned. Okay, let's bring up a daily chart of the Nasdaq. Okay, so impressive thrust higher. Okay, uh, given the fact that that bull flag certainly has played out. Okay, I did expect that to fail, but it didn't. It certainly played out on the back of that QE move, even though it did sell off initially. It certainly has played out. So impressive, nevertheless. Okay, now you do have an unfilled gap above that needs to be closed. That needs to close at four four five. Uh, 4, 4, 4, 450, and then obviously you've got the 200 MA as well. 
Now the question is, can we sustain that move? Now the German DAX is telling us it's not because my European market analysis tells me that the German DAX is in trouble and is into resistance, cannot sustain the move higher. So that certainly needs to be taken into consideration as well, folks. Okay, so that certainly is some food for thought, okay, for yourself. Food for thought. Okay, right. Uh, again, we need to watch the NASDAQ very carefully. 60-minute chart certainly is putting in very bullish characteristics given the fact that on the light volume it kept floating higher. But having said that, you do have two unfill gaps below that needs to close. So you look at the 10-minute chart, you can certainly see that we are into potential resistance up here now. Okay. Uh, although we did push through that resistance zone. Okay, but you do have an unfilled gap left behind. Given the weaker Chinese day, it's going to be very hard for it to sustain and move higher. Uh, support zone for it will be in this zone here. Previous support equals resistance. You do have resistance support here. And uh, you have support down below, which is over here. So the two support zones will be 4, uh, 4335, and then you're looking at 4320. You have 200 MA at 4300, and then obviously cap fill at uh, 4290. So they are the two zones that you're looking at uh, in potentially closing and uh, and that will be interesting to observe okay so again uh, from my perspective Chinese data certainly is weak looking for weakness oil commodities etc all weak euro obviously at now we're at 1.170 therefore a additional weakness uh, now you are looking at the Aussie and Kiwi being weak given the fact that commodities are weak so overall weakness but support is seen below uh, and watch out for the gap fill on the Nasdaq at 4 to 90. That should be interesting to see whether or not the market can close. Okay, so I think that's a summation of uh, US markets. Now, before I will close, I need to give, show you uh, the US dollar, see how that's trading. Okay, US dollar certainly weak on the daily chart, given the fact that uh, although it has left that uh, unfilled gap behind. Now, we did have inflation data come out stronger as well on, the, on a Friday, but certainly the market certainly seems to be ignoring that. I mean, if I just bring up the, um, where is my uh, economic data? Here we go, daily FX. And this should be interesting. So let's bring up the previous week and show you. Okay. If I go back to uh, the, okay. So import prices here were expected to be minus 0.7, came in stronger. Okay, previous minus 1.0.1%, import prices 6.1%. So import prices certainly uh, lower than expected or certainly stronger than expected to a large extent. So certainly in terms of inflation should not have been negative. But the, and also given the fact that the uh, rig count as well to a large extent lower and that obviously helps oil and therefore oil equals inflation. But the US market certainly uh, in terms of um, the uh, US dollar certainly sold off quite substantial. So even with the inflation data coming out better than expected. So US dollar certainly was getting crushed. And that's mainly, I think, from my perspective, based on the monetary policy divergence going into uh, reversal, given the fact that the uh, the um, the trade previously was the fact that you are looking at shorting the euro and going long the dollar, uh, given the monetary policy divergence between Europe and uh, US. And that's obviously gone into reverse now. So hence the reason why people are, are, are sh selling dollars and uh, obviously potentially buying euros or the whole trade is going to reverse basically hence the the weakness on the dollar and that's why the aussie and kiwi have been have been um uh, our, our sync with fundamentals as well because i was stopped out multiple times on the on a friday on my short kiwi trade given the fact that even though you have i mean if i just bring up the, the example of the kiwi and the aussie if i have the charts here yes here we go so Bring up a four-hour chart of the Kiwi. You can see here, this is where the RBNZ shot the market with the rate cut, okay? And the market retraced more than 75%. Can you believe that, folks? More than 75%. And why was that retraced? Not because the, the Kiwi stock all of a sudden found some strength. No, it was due to the fact that the monetary policy divergence went into reverse and the dollar came into immense selling pressure due to the euro appreciating. And everything that was associated with the dollar certainly um, fell as well. And that's why the Kiwi dollar is higher, okay? Hope that uh, explains that. Okay, so basically, uh, my well, my interpretation is I'm still going to be shorting the Kiwi uh, versus the dollar and shorting the Aussie versus the dollar as well, given the fact that due to that distortion, okay, fundamentally speaking. Right, okay, so take that into consideration as well, okay? And that certainly is something that we're going to be observing uh, itself. Now, also, uh, emerging markets are into resistance as well. That certainly is something to consider with your in order to support your short Aussie Kiwi trade. Now, financials, let's bring up the financials, US financials. Let's see exactly where we're positioned. The financials, very impressive. Still have that AHS formation, certainly pushing higher. Although you are coming into this diagonal trend line resistance now. Uh, you do have a resistance in this zone here. Okay, so watch out for this zone for 
for weakness, okay, uh, in terms of financials, okay. So certainly a risk aversion trade on the daily chart. Energy sector of the US certainly indicating exhaustion here. Ever since we close this gap, as you can see here on the 10 minute chart, I zoom into the 60, you can see double top resistance, okay, so looking at weakness. And the daily chart certainly holding that resistance level. So the uh, energy sector certainly is into resistance, especially with the Iranian news, and therefore looking for weakness. Let's bring up the retail sector, uh, daily chart of the US retail sector into the 200 MA resistance, and therefore you're looking for weakness, and also you have this uh, horizontal resistance as well. So there's two zones that we're looking for weakness and looking for the markets to move lower. House builders, interesting, out the US, you are into gap for resistance here, although you do have an additional gap above. You have previous support equal resistance as well. So if you do push higher, that certainly is a key level to watch, okay? That's the house builders in the US. Now, consumer staples, daily chart, certainly impressive, although we have put in a doji, so watch out for weakness there. 10 minute chart, no higher high, okay? Looking for a lower high, and therefore you usually get a lower low. So looking at consumer staples, certainly you're looking at weakness. Uh, the uh, daily chart of uh, the industrial utility, sorry, again, certainly indicating weakness with the doji, potential reversal trade. And the uh, the actual uh, diagonal trend line here is certainly indicating weakness as well, given the fact that the 10 minute chart has a double top uh, or potential lower high, so indicating weakness, 60 minute chart with an unfilled gap below. So overall, all the sectors, to my understanding, certainly are indicating weakness. Now, the metals as well, this is an important metals and mining. Again, you can see we put in a lower high, therefore looking for a lower low on the 60 minute chart. The daily chart as well, indicating weakness with the doji. Okay, so again, certainly indicating weakness, and that certainly is a HS formation brewing from my perspective. So, uh, overall, net net, you are looking at weakness going into uh, next week. Now, looking at the 10 year, uh, let's just bring up the 10 year quickly. Uh, looking at this uh, chart at the moment, as we all know. If the uh, if the ten year falls and that ten year tends to cause a yield to move higher, uh, uh, and that obviously helps the dollar to a large extent. Okay, but it certainly hasn't been. So this is quite interesting uh, itself. Uh, technically should so you can certainly see some divergence there, and that's mainly due to the Euro ECB causing friction and chaos, uh, from my understanding. Now the Russell three thousand. This is interesting. This chart itself is into resistance. Okay, so therefore looking for weakness below. Okay, so looking at uh, further weakness in US markets. Now, is there any other index that I haven't observed? Uh, I think that's it. Okay, so if, let's just have a look at the dollar futures now at the moment. You are into gap fill support in the dollar futures, therefore looking for a potential bounce. Okay, so that should be interesting. Now, the S&P and the, the NASDAQ certainly have gap below, certainly move lower. That certainly is supporting uh, my risk aversion thesis or philosophy if you watch my European market analysis. Okay, so... Summation, looking for weakness due to number one, Chinese data week, number two, anti-QE rhetoric from China, uh, and number three, oil into resistance with this Iranian news, uh, number four, commodities in general with copper and gold, certainly into resistance, zinc, and iron ore, all indicating resistance, okay, and you've got the uh, concerns with regards to Euro USD spiking to 1.16, uh, and the yen obviously into support, so Euro into support, yen into support, CHF into support, yuan into resistance, Okay, this isn't looking good, uh, given the fact that oh, Mr. Osborne has talked about uh, weaker global growth again. Miss Merkel loses uh, two key areas in terms of the election recently. And there's many other uh, additional uh, risk-off articles that were out last week, especially with this uh, import price in the US certainly picking up steam as well. Okay, I think that's a summation. Uh, my European market analysis is bearish, US market analysis is bearish, looking for further downside. Goodbye now, folks. Be sure to visit cfts.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.